Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, real big day here because I have with me the brand new Cadex Vista FPV camera for the DJI digital FPV system. This is not a pre-release unit. This is not a beta test. This is the official release unit. This is what you will get if you order one right now. And I have got my hands on a brand new one. This was purchased by myself for myself. And let's see what we're going to get with this guy. I am super excited for this because this is another one of those big steps in the evolution of our hobby, provided it doesn't get killed off in three years. <clears throat> FAA. This is DJI and Cadex working together to move digital FPV in the right direction. Uh, originally, when I started off, uh, with the DJI system, uh, I tried it once when it first came out and I was not a big fan. I did not like the way the goggles fit, wasn't a big fan of latency, but I tell you what, I assumed DJI was using us as guinea pigs for something else and they weren't going to be very responsive, but boy, am I wrong. They keep pushing out updates and making the system better and better with analog integration. And now we have actual cameras that are designed to fit in the things that we do, unlike the air unit here, which I don't know what they designed this for, but it definitely wasn't for us. Now we have the Cadex Vista. And here we go. This is what you get. So, off the top you have a little mounting solution for your antenna. The antenna is a Rush Racing left-hand circular polarized antenna. MMCX connector, of course. This is uh, not a stubby, but it isn't super long. Overall length of the antenna itself is about 75 millimeters, roughly. Um, and then the, the coax part of it, if you're curious about that, is about, oh, I'd say 35 millimeters. So it's, uh, it's not a stubby, but it's not a super long one. I'd say it's uh, comparable to the original DJI antennas. So they're about the same length there. So you have an antenna, you have the mount for it. You get a, get out of there. Uh, you get a wire harness, which is nice. You get, uh, it's all silicone wires. And let's get onto what we're all really here for. The actual air unit itself. And that's all you get. There's supposed to be instructions somewhere, according to the Oh, there they are. They fell out on the ground. Come back here. Uh, you get a little instruction pamphlet. Nothing too crazy in here. It's got your power connections and signals just so you can see that there. Not a lot to it. It's supposed to be capable of all the same things as the original air unit, minus actually being able to record to it. We'll talk about that in a minute. So here we go. Here is the air unit. So the cabling it's using is very reminiscent of the same cable that was used on the baby turtle. And what's funny is when you buy a baby turtle replacement cable, the cable is actually labeled DJI video cable for turtle. Kind of strange, huh? So I wonder if DJI and Cadex have been working together for a little while now. Just thoughts, just thinking out loud. The camera itself is the pretty much the exact same camera. They have their own little back plate on it, but it's the same camera as the original air unit. And here's the part that we all really care about. This is the new VTX. And it is way smaller than the old one. Get an idea of how big it is. There we go, uh, about, uh, 15 millimeters and of course the the whole size here we are at 20 millimeters square using these holes here does use a USB-C connector on the side of it for pushing updates to it through the software uh, it's not the it's not as light as I would think it would be um, especially compared to the, the the original air unit so we can stack these up here so you can get an idea of the size difference. So it is definitely smaller. Move the camera a little bit here, see if we can get a better look at it. So here we go, straight up and down on it. 
So it is quite a bit smaller. It is a pretty much the same thickness as the old air unit. A lot less material on it. The cabling here is not protected like this one is. Hopefully that doesn't introduce any sort of noise. So let's get this thing weighed. So on Caddx's website, they say this whole unit weighs 33 grams. Let's see if that holds true. So here we go, we got the camera and let's leave the lens cap off because nobody flies with that on. With the hardware, 29 grams. Throw an antenna, 33. And your pigtail, <clears throat> 32. So their claim of 33 grams is, I'd say it's pretty accurate. So let's get this back down to just the weight of the air unit itself. So 28 grams. The original DJI unit. 44, so that is a significant weight difference between the two units. So a couple other differences between the two units here uh, is the price. So this unit here is a about $140. This thing here is anywhere from $170 to $180. Um, you can buy replacement cameras individually. They're roughly about $50 a piece. And you know, without actually getting it in your hand, you can't really get a good idea of the real size of this thing. I'd say it's about the size of a traditional two board ESC flight controller combo. So whatever your stack height is, figure out you're going to probably have to double it or you'll have to have a frame that uses two mounting stacks. Uh, and even, even the DJI unit, I really didn't realize how small it was. Looking at the pictures before I actually got one in my hand, I thought this thing was like, you know, the size of a quad. I know there's dimensions and stuff online, but you just don't, you don't get a feel for it until you actually get it in your hand. And these things are actually pretty small. Uh, but the biggest complaint I had about this is like, who was this made for? It doesn't have any mounting solution. What I'm supposed to do just double side tape this thing to everything. Two antennas, that's cool. But what if I only wanted to use one? What if I only had space for one? You're kind of hooped. You know, like you got to use it. So this, this works really well. I've never had any issues with it. It records 1080p uh, video, which is really nice. You get really good quality video out of this setup. Um, if you're looking for really great video, you're still probably rocking a GoPro along with this. So this thing here kind of bridges that gap where I don't really care all that much about the onboard recording here. I mean, the, the 720p signal that goes into your goggles that records, that's really good. And if you turn on high quality, which boosts the latency up and turn off uh, focus mode, you get some really impressive looking video, especially for like Facebook because let's, or for YouTube, because let's face it, um, YouTube's gonna absolutely destroy the quality of whatever it is you upload to it. That is a fact, there's no way around that. So this, in my opinion, is probably the right solution if you are, a, either racing, flying a three inch, or you run a GoPro anyways. I think this might be the way to go. Uh, the weight savings alone is pretty nice. S ease of installation because only one antenna and it actually has mounting holes. This is made for our hobby. This thing is not made for our hobby. This is made for, I don't know who, but you know, for the first good attempt, uh, I know there was other DJI FPV type things before, but you know, let's, not, let's not talk about those. This is actually really good and these are built really well. I haven't seen a whole lot of issues with this. I don't know if you saw Bardwell caught one on fire and it still worked. This thing is really nice and I'm pretty darn impressed with it. So another neat little thing they got on this is it has a way to secure that UFL connector because this thing is capable of pumping out 1.2 watts. Yes, that hack that uh, we're using on these guys to get uh, 1.2 watts out of them or 1200 milliwatts, however you want to slice it, works on this as well. Uh, this is going to get really, really, really hot and it may actually shut off on you because of how hot it gets. So they do have this little gate here for attaching your UFL connector. There's a little nub inside of there right here. You can see that. that this little piece of metal goes underneath to lock it all in. It's funny they use blue Loctite and I'm, uh, if 
from what I understand, this thing gets so sticking hot that I don't think blue Loctite is going to do anything for you. And so, do, 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 do. there you go. So that is how that little clip goes on there. Um, pretty, uh, pretty good little idea. Uh, I think TBS has been using something like that to hold their SMA connectors down because they're, uh, they seem to be a holdout for MMCX. Let's, uh, let's see if we can lift the top on this thing. You know me, I like to tear stuff apart before I see if it works. That way, if it burns up, there's always that question. Did I do it? Or was it like that? Now, there is firmware update for this, updates for this already. Make sure you download the newest version of the DJI Assistant before you register it with Evil Empire and uh, get your stuff loaded. Get that out of there. Get that over there. Let's see. Can I? Let's see. How does this work? So it appears like it's held together by friction or hopes and dreams. I'm not 100% sure, but there is something holding this bad boy together. Maybe it's. There's a connector. I think there's a connector right here, possibly. There we go. All right, so got that off of there. There is the underside of the board itself. Pretty dang nice looking. There's a little, a little button hood dingler right here. There's your solder pads. Uh, this thing does contain uh, the ability to connect. Um, do RC commands through the DJI remote. I don't have one of those, so I'm not going to be using their S plus protocol, but, um, build quality doesn't look too bad. It's kind of weird that I already have some slaughter on these already. Not really sure where that came from. Um, it's not used, but it may have gotten on there from the construction process somehow. Here's the connector that interfaces with this. Looks like there's some sort of ceiling compound right here. Let's see. Is that, is that squishy? Yeah, there's some sort of gasket type material on this metal plate here. I wonder if that is... It's probably to seal out EMI, if I had to guess, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, what do you guys think of that? What... What do you suppose that this is here for? Um, I'm not super um, up on electronics. I mean, a little bit here and there. There's the chipset numbers. And that's the top plate with the antenna connector. And let's see if we can dig a little bit further. Oh, more screws. Let's start taking more stuff apart. Because eventually you're gonna have to replace the camera, right? Or is it the people that have the DJI system are so tapped for cash that they're not going to push it? What do you think? You think this is going to get to the point where people are doing the same crazy stuff as the traditional systems? I think so. And all right, here's that center spacer. Ah. Ah. So here's that center spacer that just fell off. Set that aside. Here's the lower board. Camera is held on. Um, I'll buy another clip here. So if you want to change your camera cable or your camera itself. I don't know if the cameras come with the cable or not. Uh, if you know, put it down the uh, the description there. I, I'm not 100% sure. So they still use this, this kind of like pin lock style connecting D hickey there. And this, God, this cable looks darn near exactly like the cable on the stinking turtle. I actually just threw one of those cables away yesterday. I really wish I would have kept it. It's going to have something to compare it to. Let's see if we can lift off this spacer here. Come on. Without screwing anything up. Oop, oop, oop. There, oh, I'm letting... I'm releasing the schmoo. There's some schmoo in there. 
Ugh. So, thermal compound everywhere inside of this. So apparently that's the stuff that gets hot. It's the stuff in there. And there's some thermal compound. It's kind of just schmooed right on there. Hey, if this doesn't work, I'm just going to delete this video. All right, so let's go ahead and put this thing back together, and I'll be right back. All right, well, that wasn't too difficult. For as much as things this does, uh, its assembly is pretty darn straightforward. You know, I figured it'd be some weird, like, anti-tamper crap that I have to mess with, but, you know, there's really nothing to it. Um, pretty well built. I'm pretty impressed. Uh, another little tidbit about this that uh, proves that this is built for us, and I don't know if this was, success. You can run success right to this thing. This, you run success to it, and it becomes a sparkler. You need to have 4S, and if you're running a 6S setup, you need to have a pretty heavy-duty back to handle the power that this one consumes. So let's say you had a flight controller for the original DJI system. You know, they come with a, uh, a connector, a pinout already built up for the G DJI system. We now have the ability to just plug into your existing flight controller if you had one that was kind of built for the DJI unit. And now we have all our wired connections that we can solder directly to that. So that makes this very easy to make the transition from your full-size DJI air unit to the Cadex Vista air unit. So that is the Cadex Vista. Um, I'm really kind of excited where this hobby is going. I think the digital systems are here to stay and I think it's going to get better. I don't think the proprietariness of it is going to stick around. I kind of have a feeling that other people are going to have to get into the game. Um, I'm looking at like Orca because they, they haven't flat out said they're going to support the DJI system, but they've hinted pretty, or they've hinted that they're going to somehow, some way, I'm not sure. But um, the DJI goggles are a hot steaming mess. They fit nobody there just awful. Nobody makes a good faceplate for them either. Even the shims, they still just, I don't know who they, I think they were designed to fit a brick wall because that's about how they're shaped. Um, I have mine, so they're tolerable, but it took a lot of doing and customizing and all that. Uh, but I, I, I think if we could use the digital system, like, like the Vista with goggles, like your fat sharks or orcas, uh, I think this will would take off and probably become the new norm. Um, obviously, price and weight are other two other big aspects. I don't see a whole lot of racers jumping towards this stuff unless, for some reason, all they have. I mean, not not professional level racers, but um, the hobbyist, the weekend warriors. Uh, I can see a lot of people going with this. Uh, I get asked all the time, "What goggles should I start off with if I'm not if I'm getting into this hobby?" And right now. I have a very, very hard time recommending anything other than the DJI system. You can do digital, you can do analog, hook a rapid fire up to it. You get all the signal quality of your fat sharks. You don't get OLED screens, but the LCE screens that are in those goggles are pretty darn good. Uh, I think they're actually better than like what were in the HD3s, at least in my opinion. Um, it It's really hard to recommend something else. Uh, as far as the fit goes, Either, either you like it or you don't. Most likely you don't because I don't know anybody who does. You kind of find a way to either A, live with it or B, fix it. But anyways, that's where we are with this. That's where we are with the hobby. I'm super excited to get this into a quad. I'm probably going to dump it into... I'm looking at the wall of quads and I don't know what to put in. Um, all right, so here are my options. I'm not really sure what I'm going to put this in. And maybe you guys can help me out. Um, I plan on doing this pretty soon. And I think, all right, so here's here's my thoughts. Either I'm gonna put in this Gecko, which has the Cadex Tarsier in it, which if you've never used a Cadex Tarsier and you're still in the analog world, this is a really good camera. Or a Floss 3. I don't know, it's hard to decide. What do you guys think? Put it in the, put it in the description, which, uh, which ones you'd rather see the Vista in either the, the Gecko or the Floss 3. So, I mean, that's that's about all I can think about right now. Uh, if you guys are interested in this stuff, please check out my links down below. I 
will, I mean, they're probably affiliate links. I mean, that's how I got to keep this thing going. Uh, the more you use those, the more chances I get to bring cool stuff like that to the channel, whether I'm paying for it or it's being supplied by a vendor. Um, if you want me to review things like this, you know, go ahead and hit up these vendors, tell them, Hey, send this dude some stuff and I'll, uh, I'll do what you guys need me to do. And if you want any other, if you have any other questions about this, what do you want to see? Let me know. I will gladly answer it. Um, which quad do you want me to put that in? Three inch gecko, five inch floss. I don't do a whole lot of acro. I race all the time. Gecko, floss, gecko, floss, gecko, floss. Which one do you want to do? Let me know. Let me know. I need, I need to know. Um, but most likely I'll just, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you want me to put in. I am curious your thoughts. What do you think of this whole digital revolution uh, for the DJI system? Uh, yeah, these things are pretty darn ugly right now. Um, we're on rapid fire four, analog video, really good setup. Awesome DVR, really awesome DVR. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. And this is the Cadex Vista supplied by nobody besides my hard work and my day job. All right, guys, see you around. Bye.